Very Old Engines, Part 1, Cross Patch. Scarloe made a face. Not again, Nancy, please. Just a teeny polish, she coaxed. You must look nice for your 100th birthday. I am nice. You're just a fusspot. And you're, and you're just, and you're a horrid old cross patch. Nancy polished him vigorously. Scarloe smiled. Nancy, he said, I really was a cross patch once. Shall I tell you? Yes, please. We'll come, we'll come down. We'll come down. I can't tell a properly what, I can't tell it properly while you're fussing up, the, while you're, while you're fussing up there, and fussing up there. Just five minutes then, no longer. Na just five minutes, just five minutes then, no longer. Sorry about that. Nancy sat down on a box, and the old engine began. Talaclin, Dolgok, Reneus, and I were built together in England. Who, asked Nancy, are Talaclin and Dolgok? Talaclin is my twin. Ren Dolgok is Reneus's. Their railway is at town in Wales, and they're one hundred too. They were green, and they and we were red. Talaclin and I had four wheels then, and no cab. We thought we were wonderful, and talked about how splendid we'd look pulling coaches. What about trucks? asked Nancy. Scarloe chuckled. We had no use for them, he said. I was, I was finished first and sent away on a ship. I didn't like that. It wobbled dreadfully at the port. The big railway kept me waiting. They had no cranes to lift me out. It wasn't the Fat Controller's railway then. He would have managed much better. What did they do? asked Nancy. They used the ship's derricks. They nearly turned me upside down, said Scarloe indignantly, and left me hanging while they arranged the truck. You must have looked funny, gir gurgled Nancy. Yes, and I felt it too. I got crosser and crosser. They fastened me to the truck at last, and an engine took me away. His name was Neil. He was ugly but kind, and we were soon friends. So ye're bound for the wee railway, he said. Ye must put some order into those trucks. The haver, the havers they make, ye'd hardly believe. I didn't like the sound of that, but I was too tired to say anything. Plenty of people were waiting when we got there, but they weren't. To, but they weren't used to engines, and it was dark before I was on my rails. Then they left me lonely and unhappy, and wishing Reneus would come. Trucks were everywhere next morning. Suddenly, with a rattle and a roar, a train of loaded ones came came in. I was surprised. There's no engine, I said. A workman laughed. They, they've come down by gravity, he said. The empty ones need pulling up, though. That's why you're, that's why you've come. But can't, th but can't they go up by grow whatever it was you said? Gravity only brings things down. We need horses or engines like you to pull them up. What? Have I to pull trucks? Of course. I won't. I want coaches. He just laughed and walked away. Soon, Mr. Mack, the manager, arrived with some trucks, I mean, arrived with some men. He showed them my parts from a book. We're going to steam you, Scarloe, he said. Can I pull coaches, sir? No, certainly not. I gave him such a look. They didn't understand engines, so it was easy. My fire wouldn't burn, and I made no steam. I just blew smoke at them. They called me 
bad names, but I didn't care. Next day, they tried again, and the next, and the next. I just gave them my look and wouldn't do a thing. At last, the manager said, Very well, be a crosspatch, but we're not going to look at your sulky face all day. We'll cover you up and leave you till you're a better engine. They did that. They did, too, chuckled Scarlowy. They fetched a big tarpaulin and covered me right up. I didn't like that at all. I think it served you right, said Nancy severely. Never mind her, Scarlowy. Please tell us what happened next. Nancy turned in surprise. A group of people had quietly come up to listen while Scarlowy was telling her his story.